Hi everybody and welcome to another installment of Fidelis Fun Features, where we showcase some of the more advanced features of Abacus in a fun and interesting way. Today, Dr. Rob Hurlson, co-founder and chief engineer of Fidelis, will be utilizing the ductile damage feature to virtually smash a pumpkin on the ground in celebration of All Hallows Eve. We hope you enjoy and have a safe and happy Halloween. Hi there everybody. So a little bit of background before we get started as usual. Today we're going to be using the ductile damage function within Abacus to make sure the pumpkin actually smashes when it hits the ground. This feature allows us to prescribe a reduction in both yield strength and elasticity as the strain increases beyond a predefined threshold. Eventually the element will reach zero load carrying capability and it's removed from the analysis both analytically and visually. All right, so our first job here is to create the pumpkin itself. So we're going to call this pumpkin. It's really just the pumpkin body. We're going to use a solid revolution and it's going to be deformable. And our size is going to be about a meter. So we're going to actually make this 0 0.6 meters or 600 millimeter pumpkin, which is pretty reasonable size. And so we're going to use this circle drawing method. We're going to say negative 300 and then 300 to make the outer skin and then we're going to do the same thing again with an inch uh, thick skin so we're going to use zero and then minus 275 so we've got that 25 millimeter skin uh, 275 to make our pumpkin shape once we've closed the edges we can revolve the pumpkin around 360 degrees and we'll have a pumpkin shape. Next we need to cut this pumpkin in half so that we can draw the face on. So we're going to use the partition feature here, three points, and now we've kind of cut this piece in half. We've got a surface inside there and we can now use the extrude cut to draw a face on the pumpkin. So this is where we get to be a little bit more artistic. We can um, draw it however we want. I think we want zero uh, down to be in the y direction. So we're going to do some eyes. Oops, don't like that eye. Let's see. And this is a little better. I had an eye over here. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's a pumpkin after all. Going to give it a triangular nose. And then the mouth can be real funky. So we're going to give this guy a bit of a grin here. And maybe we'll put a little tooth in it too. All right. So we've got our pumpkin face, which we can extrude through the surface. And there we go. We've got a pumpkin face. Kind of kind of looks, looks pretty good. Um, so next job is to create a stem for the pumpkin. So that's going to be an extrusion. And we're aiming to get an 80 by 80 millimeter square on the bottom of the extrusion. Uh, with something around kind of I think about 200 millimeters in height for the stem and again we can be a little bit more kind of freehand with this tool uh, give ourselves kind of a funky shaped stem and if we then extrude this 80 millimeters the base should be a square which we have and finally we ready to make uh, the floor which is just going to be a discrete rigid shell uh, and we're going to make that two meters by two meters so we're going to start at zero so 2000 by 2000 millimeters so i should make a nice large floor for the pumpkin to splat onto before we build any properties we're actually going to assemble the parts and the reason why is we're going to combine the stem and the pumpkin into one part which will um, allow us to mesh a little bit easier so you can see we need to first of all rotate uh, the floor by 90 degrees and that's going to be about the x axis so zero and then, and then one and 90 degrees okay so we've got the right orientation we're going to want to drop the floor down um, by about we'll call it a meter so that it has some distance to fall before it hits there. Whoops. 
this should be zero and then this should be minus 1000 okay so the pumpkin's gonna fall you know around uh, what would that be 600 mils so it's diameter before it hits the ground that should be enough to see it so that's okay we're gonna move uh, the floor into the center of the pumpkin so we actually need to move it uh, let's see minus one the uh, yep minus 1000 and then minus 1000 in the z direction okay so now our floor is in the correct location we still want to move the stem up to the top of the pumpkin so we're going to move that up by 290 millimeters and then we're going to use this combine feature so we're going to call it uh, pumpkin one we're going to combine the stem with the main pumpkin and now we've got one part uh, another thing we're going to want to do is cut uh, this one piece now this new piece um, so that we can define different properties for the stem and the main pumpkin and that's just so that we can have different colors which will look kind of cool in the animation so i'm going to use this feature that allows us to cut along the uh, shape of the outside shell of the pumpkin and now we've got two separate parts we're now ready to build the property of our pumpkin so i took some information from online here for things like the density and other things we've had to kind of deduce by trial and error so the density of the pumpkin is going to be 4.8 e minus 10 uh, we need to give it an elastic property which will be um, i think young's module is going to be 20 megapascals uh, with a placent ratio of 0.3 uh, we need to give it the ductile damage behavior which we're going to use the ductile damage as we mentioned before and our fracture strain is going to be 1 e minus 5 uh, traxiality and strain rate don't really become relevant damage evolution allows us to remove the elements and we're going to say that the displacement of failure is also going to be 5 e minus 5 all right and then finally we need to add some plasticity so that we can actually get some uh, plastic strain and then we're going to call this uh, yield strength of two megapascals and uh, it goes perfectly plastic at three megapascals and a strain of 0.1 and that should be our pumpkin material property ready to go now what we're going to do here is we're going to say we have a um, section called pump and we're going to use the pumpkin material for that and we're also going to make another section called stem and we're just going to use the same material for that so there we go when we assign these materials now we can give the pumpkin the pumpkin material property and the stem the stem material property and that will allow us to show them as different colors later on obviously the floor doesn't require any material being a rigid uh, so we're ready to move on to the step and with this being an explicit analysis we choose dynamic explicit uh, we're going to run this for I think one second should be good and we're going to use some mass scaling just so that we can actually um, make sure we don't wait too long for this to work so we're going to say 1e minus 6 is our target time increment and we're ready to go on that front interaction we do need to apply uh, a rigid body constraint to the floor uh, to make sure it doesn't go anywhere so that's going to be rigid body we're going to say the body elements are the floor and the reference point is the control point we also need to apply some contact we're going to use general contact for this which allows uh, both contact with the ground and self contact once the pumpkin explodes we're going to use an interaction property here and basically just let abacus give us its default so we really don't need to apply anything there choose interaction property one and now we've got contact within the model 
we need to apply a load. So a couple of things we're going to do here is apply gravity just so that when the pumpkin bounces, we see that effect. And that's going to be in the negative y direction. We also want to apply a boundary condition to the floor. So we're going to use uh, encaster there, which means it can't move anywhere. And finally, we need to apply a predefined field of velocity to the pumpkin. And that's going to be in the negative y direction. And it's going to be 9, uh, 9, 0, 0, which is the speed the pumpkin would be traveling if it had fallen 5 meters already. OK. Finally, we need to mesh these parts. And we're going to let this mesh be uh, reasonably um, free. So we're going to tet mesh the whole thing. Change that to tet. And we're going to make sure that we've got the correct kind of elements. So that would be 3D stress, explicit. Um, that all looks good. I think mesh size, we want something like 25 millimeters, so a one inch mesh. And we're going to let that go ahead and mesh itself. That looks fine. We're not too worried about mesh quality for this example. We also need to mesh the floor, which is here. And that can just mesh very large. Okay, so I think at this point, we are ready to run this analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and call this job pumpkin. And we're going to use some parallelization here. So eight CPUs, which is what this machine has. And then we can go ahead oops, and get the simulation started. All right, so now we've run the analysis. It took about only two or three minutes. So quite a quick one, this one. And um, we should note that we did actually need to switch the status field output on, which basically means that the elements will disappear once they've become uh, useless, essentially, because of the ductile damage. Uh, so bef but before we start to uh, visualize this, I think what we're going to do is we're going to change the colors. So we did uh, give ourselves different sections for the main body and the stem. And this is the reason so that we could give them the correct colors for a pumpkin. So we've got kind of a brown for the stem and, of course, bright orange for the main body. And now we've got what looks a lot more like a pumpkin. So now we can go ahead and visualize the pumpkin falling. And you can see that we do get that splat kind of behavior that we were looking for. We can, we can kind of slow it down if we want. So we can see it uh, in kind of slow motion. Uh, play that again there. So we can see it's super slow. Uh, we can speed this up so that we can see it a bit quicker. We can also take a look at the stresses that develop during this event. So you can see that obviously as we get the impact, we get kind of a quite a high stress state down there in the bottom of the pumpkin. We might want to stop there and maybe just show ourselves kind of the moment of impact we get a lot of stress and that's what's causing this material failure all around uh, then the elements start to delete and the pumpkin breaks apart as, exactly as we'd expect and so that's the end of this tutorial hope it was useful hope it was ghoulish and uh, we'll see you next time